Hey guys, welcome back to T-Bones Tech. Today we are doing my comparison over the Canon EOS R5 and the R6. So I actually went ahead and pre-ordered both these two cameras and they're supposed to be available at the end of July. And I also paid for one day shipping, so as soon as I get these cameras in my hands, I'm going to have tons of unboxings and video tests of these cameras. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure to hit the subscribe button and then you won't miss any of the new videos that are released on these cameras. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about here is the price. The R5 comes in at $3,900 and the R6 comes in at $2,500. So that means that there is a $1,400 difference between both these two cameras with the R6 priced more towards intermediate and professional photographers that don't have a huge budget and the R5 is built more for professionals that have bigger budgets. So there is quite a big gap as far as pricing goes between both these two cameras but as far as features go the gap might not be quite as big as you think it is. So starting off with sensors the Canon EOS R5 has a brand new 45 megapixel full frame sensor that's brand new to Canon and this camera and the Canon EOS R6 actually has the same 20 megapixel full frame sensor that's found in the Canon 1DX Mark II, Canon's flagship camera. So as far as stills go, you're gonna have much better results with the R5 than you are with the R6. 45 megapixels versus the 20 megapixels in the R6 is an absolutely huge difference. And as soon as I get both these cameras in my hands, I will be doing side-by-side -side comparisons and I think the R5 is gonna have much better results than the R6s as far as stills go. But as far as video goes, the Canon R5 can now film 8K video at 30 frames per second. That's absolutely crazy, and I don't even know what to do with 8K video. I don't think my Mac can even handle that. That's much higher quality video than any of my displays that I have in the house, which are all 4K. Now, something that's really cool about filming 8K video is you can crop in digitally and still be able to export your video in full 4K and not have to worry about any loss of detail if you do digital crops. And not only can the R5 film 8K video, it can film 8K video in RAW, which is absolutely incredible. Now, if you're not interested in 8K video, and I'm sure a lot of you guys probably are not, you can film 4K video at 120 frames per second on the R5 which is huge and it's going to be great. So on the R5 we can film 4K video at 120 frames per second and we also have eight stops of image stabilization built into our camera sensors. This is going to be incredible for filming b-roll even handheld with that eight stops and filming at 124 frames per second in 4K nice and slow. It's going to be killer for b-roll and I think this is going to be a game changer for a lot of videographers. Now the Canon R6 on the other hand can film 4K video at 60 frames per second which is still really incredible and very good. The camera that I'm filming on right now is the Canon EOS R and that can only film 4K video at 30 frames per second. So this new R6 is a quite compelling upgrade over the Canon EOS R, which I really love. And also on the R6, we can film C-Log. Another big difference between the R5 and the R6 is the fact that the R5 has a nice little top deck display, which is going to give us a ton of really cool and useful information there. But the R6 being more affordable, unfortunately does not have that screen. The R5 has two slots, one CF Express slot and then one SD card slot, and the R6 just has two SD card slots. The R6 doesn't need those very expensive, very fast, CF Express cards because they're not filming 8K video. A feature that I think is gonna be really killer on both these two cameras is Canon's DuPixel AF2. So it's their updated version of DuPixel AF and this features 1,053 selectable autofocusing points which cover approximately 100% of the frame. And Canon says DuPixel Autofocus 2 is gonna offer more smoother and faster autofocusing and DuPixel Autofocusing is extremely good to begin with. So this really seems like it's going to be a big game changer and make our videos that much better. Right now, Canon already dominates the market with the best autofocusing system on their cameras. So I think this is going to be an incredible upgrade over cameras like the Canon EOS R or the Canon EOS RP. It's just really going to be a game changer. Both these two cameras ship with Canon's brand new LP HN lithium ion battery. And this is a more powerful battery. And also I believe you can recharge it using USB-C on the EOS R5 and on the EOS R6. But as far as form factor goes, this battery is the exact same size as the original LPE6 batteries that we found on cameras like the Canon 6D and the Canon 80D, Canon 90D, and a ton of other Canon cameras. So if you need to, you can use those older batteries on these new cameras. But I think potentially with those older batteries, you might not be able to record 8K video because it might suck too much power. I'm not sure about that. Canon hasn't said anything yet. But either way, it's really cool that Ken gave us a brand new battery, but it still works with the old ones as well. 
Both these two cameras have flip out touch tilt screens, which are great for vlogging. It's gonna make really high quality vlogs, and that's really cool that you can monitor yourself with those touch screens. The R5 has a 3.2 inch screen, and the R6 has a three inch screen. Now, as far as the electronic viewfinder goes, so when you look down the uh, top viewfinder, the R5 has a 5.76 million pixel OLED display, which is really incredible, and it's gonna look just like real life. And the R6, on the other hand, has a 3.6 million pixel display. Again, that is a OLED display. As far as sports photography goes, the R5 can shoot 12 frames per second with a mechanical shutter, and it can shoot 20 frames per second with an electronic or silent shutter, and the R6 can also shoot 12 frames per second with a mechanical shutter, and then 20 with an electronic. Now, as far as the image processor goes, both these cameras share the exact same Digic 10 image processor, which is Canon's newest, and allows these cameras to film such high quality 4K video. Both these cameras' bodies are weather sealed, so that means you can go out and shoot these cameras in light rain, and maybe even heavy rain, not have to worry about them getting destroyed, which is really good and important. Both these cameras have 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks so you can plug in a shotgun microphone on top of them. And they also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack so you can actually plug in headphones to your camera and you can monitor the audio that's coming in through your external microphone. This is very important for videographers and I'm glad they can include it on both these two cameras. The maximum mechanical shutter on both these cameras is 1 8,000th of a second, which is the industry standard. Both of them have a hot shoe up top for an external flash, or again, an external microphone. Now, as far as weight goes, the R5 comes in at 738 grams with the battery, and the R6, again with a battery, comes in at 680 grams, so the R5 is a little bit heavier, but again, that's to be expected with more technology crammed into the body. Both these two cameras have USB-C, which is really cool and important. They also both have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I think in conclusion, the average person is probably going to want to pick up the R6. It is a very good and capable camera on paper. And I think the average person is going to be completely fine with 4K video at 60 frames per second. Now, if you're looking for a stills camera, I probably would not recommend picking up a R6 with the low megapixel count of only 20 megapixels. It's really not designed for taking high quality stills. I think if you're trying to take high quality stills, you're probably better off uh, buying a Canon 5D Mark IV or something like that. Both these cameras are really meant for filming high quality video. Now, like I said, the R6 is probably the camera that most of you guys are going to want to pick up. However, if you do have that extra money, the Canon R5 definitely seems like it's incredible incredible camera with that 8K video and 4K video at 120 frames per second. And again, that 8K video is available to film at 30 frames per second in RAW, which is truly incredible. The Canon EOS R5 is the first mirrorless camera to film 4K video, which again is truly incredible. And if you want to pay extra for that, I definitely recommend picking it up if you have the extra money. And also that 45 megapixel sensor on the R5 is definitely really cool as well. But like I said in the beginning of this video, I did pre-order both these two cameras so I'm going to have hands-on content as soon as I get them in the mail so make sure to subscribe button so you don't miss those two videos well that's all I got for you guys in this video if you enjoyed it make sure to give me a big thumbs up down below and of course make sure to subscribe button and then you'll be notified when I release those new videos to this YouTube channel again that's all I got for you guys in this video thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one